Okay, so we're in the process of replacing the rear wheel bearings. The first thing you have to do is you have to get this nut off the back. It goes right back here and fits on the, the, the axle. The, they call this the um, stub axle. Okay, so that's on there really, really, really tight. Okay, right there. Let me get some light on the subject matter. Right there. Um, so the way I got it off, there's a, and there's a whole a whole lot of different opinions about this. One of the things that you have to watch out for is this thing is staked on here. There's these little areas on the nut that are deformed and press in the flats that are on this axle. That's basically called staking that, or the FSM likes to call it caulking the nut. I don't know. So, but it's on there really tight. So, the FSM, that's the factory, the factory service manual, says clearly, do not, um, do not uncaulk this, which I presume to mean try to unpin it, uh, un uh, unpin it from these stakes. Now a lot of people have different ways of doing that. One of the ways they do that is by um, using Dremel tools and other ways to kind of grind this off and get in there and do all that. I opted to just go with the, with the factory service manual. So what I did was while this nut was on here, all right, I had a socket on it, right? And I had a half inch breaker bar in the socket. And I made sure that you should really should use a shorter socket. I didn't have a shorter socket. I should have used a shorter socket, but I didn't. Um, make sure that, that this is on the half inch breaker bar and the breaker bar rests against this control arm. Basically, what you're doing is you're locking in this nut so it can't turn. And by doing so, since the, tur since the nut can't turn, what I did was I put the wheel back on, wheel nuts, put the wheel, put it back on there, took the jack stand out, lowered the car back down on its wheels, so now it's a roller again, but it doesn't, as soon as you start to roll backwards, that jam, that, uh, that, uh, that breaker bar jams against that control arm and holds the nut. The nut. And then you can actually kind of use the weight of the car, so you kind of rock the car forward and rock it back and just kind of pull on it. And uh, it spun right off, and it a whole lot of, wasn't a whole lot of drama there. Um, and that kept me from having to like put all kinds of force up here trying to get a long arm on it, or use if I had a, sh a shorter. Um, and I, I, frankly, I don't know if my half inch drive. I didn't even realize I had my. I couldn't find my half inch uh, impact gun. I should just use that. But it would have been a really tight fit up in there. I'm not sure if it had enough room. And that impact driver is not very stout. I don't know if it would have done it anyway. But that worked, so that's an option. And uh, like I said, you know the the nuts, the nut screws right back on again, no problem. You know it's uh, I already screwed it all the way back on and off a couple times just to make sure. So we're good to go there. So I didn't apparently deform the threads on the uh, axle any. These got a little bit chewed up. Uh, I don't know if the picture will show it. Right where the uh, stakes were. But I have a feeling that this is thinner metal here where it's staked down. It's pretty thin, and that's, that axle shaft is probably pretty stout stuff. So I, th I think the idea is these are supposed to just deform out when you unscrew it. Again, that's controversial. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about that. Uh, and I, I respect these people. I, I'm not saying what they're doing, but they're, that they're wrong. But I figured, well... I'm going to just go with the FSM and try that and see what happens just so other people who are reading the FSM wonder if it will work or if it will not work. Uh, and it, for me, it worked. So the next step is to get the uh, wheel puller and attach these hubs and get a slide hammer and yank that out. And like I said, as soon as I get that, we'll get that out and then we'll, then we'll examine the bearings and see what kind of condition they're in. But, you know, that doesn't sound too bad now. I don't know, but what the heck? It's a 45-year-old grease. Even if the bearings were in perfect shape, I don't know how the grease would be holding up. 
doesn't hurt. So uh, I drive this car a lot. I put a lot of miles on it, cross country trips. So I really can't afford to have uh, problematic uh, wheel bearings. I don't want this thing smoking a bearing halfway across the country. Anyway, more to come later. Thanks for watching.